Okay, we are demonstrating our Themina and Norton resistance circuit here using the MyDAC. First thing we're going to want to do is build a DAC assist with an analog or with a analog output of on a voltage source. We'll specify that and make sure to change it to one sample on demand. Okay, and we want to create a number control to control our voltage source. We'll name it voltage source. And then we will wire it to the deck. And for a voltage source, we're going to use three volts actually. So now we have the DAC built. We run it, and then this is what. Oh, okay, this is our uh, circuit that we developed that we are going to be implementing on the DAC. Um, it's actually a little bit different than the one that was given. We just added a couple different branches, kind of just played around with it, making, trying to make it a little bit more fun. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to wire, this is going to be our voltage source, AOO. We can just place it up here somewhere. We also need a ground. So we will ground this quick. There's a sticker in there somewhere. And we are going to start with, we're going to use a 2.4 kilo ohm resistor. It's going to be parallel with this voltage source. And then with the same node on the top here, another 2.4 resistor is going to be wired to it and then we can just place that off in the distance. Coming from that node we have R3 which is a 10k ohm resistor and it's actually connected just like this. We can bring this down over to here. It's actually in the same node as the 2.4 kilo ohm resistor in parallel with the voltage source. At the same node where the 2.4 and the 10 kilo ohm resistor are placed, we have a 2 kilo ohm resistor also at the same node, and that just goes somewhere down in the breadboard. So we can just see if I can place it in there. Okay. So we have our four resistors so far, and the same node as the other leg of the 2 kilo ohm resistor, we have R5, which is a 10k ohm resistor and that goes to the reference node so we just go something like this start this out here just like this so we have the 10k and it's at the reference node we also have another 10k and that uh, we can put him down the breadboard here if we can get him in Oh, sorry about this. Okay, now we have our R6 on the breadboard, and R7 is RL, which is a 5.6 kilo ohm resistor, and it goes from the 10k back to the reference node. So, just connect at the same node, and it goes back to the reference node. So it goes a lot like this. Okay, and that is our circuit on the breadboard. And now that we have our um, circuit built on the breadboard, we are going to go back to LabVIEW and obviously just bring up Elvis so we can check voltages across the resistors. And we are actually going to use a 3 volt voltage source because um, 5 volt is not allowed. Uh, the DAX doesn't allow it without some internal resistance. So now we have that. We're gonna run run LabVIEW and we're gonna run Elvis and I set it to auto range and make sure you have it on voltage. DC voltage. And now for the prongs, obviously just do that. We want to check voltage and we want it black goes with black obviously. And now that we have that we can go ahead and check our voltages across our resistors. So this this is R2, which is a 2.4 kilo ohm resistor in parallel with the voltage source. So it should be three volts that runs across this resistor. And if we check it, we get we get 
We got three volts on the Elvis, so that's proof. We can go ahead and check any resistor in the circuit that we want. So if we want to check voltage across the RL, which is 5.6K, we can just... And it's negative because I have the, have the prongs on backwards, but if we flip them, let's see, Elvis gives us uh, 0.6 volts, which in multi-sim is uh, theoretically correct. And that's how you check voltage, voltage across resistors. Okay, the next part we're going to do is we're going to check current across our resistors. So to start, obviously, we want to check, we go on amps, and just use auto range, much easier. And then go ahead and run Elvis. Then we go down here, and we have to change these prongs we want, amps. Then I have the, I attach a wire to the um, prong, so we can stick it in the node, it's much easier, I'd recommend it. And if we want, we can just go ahead and check, let's just go ahead and check the current across R1, which is a 2.4 kilo ohm resistor. So we take one leg out, put the, the wire on the prong in the node that we took it out of. Let me just go ahead and touch it and we get negative 0.44 milliamps and it's negative because I have the prongs backwards so and it, our theoretical our theoretical values which we used multi-sim for we got 436 microamps which we get 400 and 440 microamps so it's it's close. Okay, the next part of the lab is actually the fun part of the lab. It's calculating V feminine, which is very simple. So we are gonna want to check. We're gonna want to use volts, obviously. So we'll change it to volts. And we're gonna run it, and we have to change the prongs again. So we want that. Oh, we're gonna put a voltage here. So we go like that. Now to check V feminine. We actually disconnect our RL, which is a 5.6 kilo ohm resistor. So we just go ahead and take that resistor out. And I have attached wires to both the prongs of the multimeter. So I can just go ahead and stick the prongs in the node where RL used to be. The nodes where RL used to be. Go ahead and do that. We, we had some switch over right here. Our theoretical value using multi sim, we discovered it to be 1.73, and using them DAC, V feminine would equal 1.723 volts, which is, which is close. The resistance might be off a little bit in all of these, or the, the values might be a little bit off in all of these because we are using wires as opposed to a perfect system, so the wires do actually have a tad bit of resistance. Okay, the next part of the lab is to calculate R feminine, which is just total resistance. And to do this, we want to check, we want to use ohms, auto range, we go ahead and run the El Elvis. And for a voltage source, we're actually going to, we're actually going to use no voltage source. So we can just go ahead and change that to zero volts right here. Bring Elvis back up. Okay. Now all you're going to do is it's the same thing as before, where RL used to be. Go ahead and put the prongs in the node. So that is how you calculate R feminine. And we get 12.6 kilo ohms and our theoretical values were 12.7 kilo ohms. This is probably due to the uh, air and the wires used in the circuit. The next part of the lab we are going to calculate I-Norn, also known as I-Short Circuit. 
And to do this, all we have to do is put our voltage source back to three. And Elvis, we want our current source, our current. And down at the prongs, of course, switch it out. Once you've done that, go ahead and put the wires in the node where RL was once again. And okay, after that, go ahead and run it. And our inorn is 0.14 milliamps, also 140 microamps. And our theoretical value was exactly 140 microamps. So that's how you calculate inorn. Okay, for this part of the lab, we are going to calculate Pmax over our RL resistor. And we have multiple different resistors for RL. We're just going to show you how to calculate one. Um, Pmax is just e easily derived. You can do V theminent squared over 4 RL, or you can just do P is equal to voltage times current, or you can do um, P is equal to voltage squared over the resistor RL divided by the resistor itself. So first thing we're going to do is calculate, we'll just calculate our voltage over our RL resistor. And for this RL resistor, we are just using a three kilo ohm. And let's see, voltage across this resistor on Elvis, it looks like it's about um, 331 millivolts. So to calculate Pmax, you can just take that square divided by three kilo ohms, or we can calculate current as well through this resistor by easily just pulling up the resistor itself using a wire, wrapping the wire around, if I can do this quickly here, around the probe. So we have that. Just insert that into the node where RL is, or came out of. And with the other probe, stick it on the resistor. And then we need to change this. Maybe we're gonna check, calculate current now. Also change the, change that. And, oh, there's some on it, that helps. And we get, um, 110, or sorry, 110 microamps, which our theoretical is about 109. So it's relatively close. And to calculate Pmax, you could also just take this current value times by the voltage across the resistor, and that would be Pmax.